This is the knob from a PG506 Tektronics calibration generator. It's a skirted knob with an aluminum insert. This is the knob from a PG506 that was donated to the museum <coughs> recently. Um, the problem with Tektronics knobs is that they're molded plastic around an aluminum insert and over time the uh, plastic shrinks and cracks and falls off the aluminum insert. Here's, this is a knob. It's on its way out. A few years ago I um, had a broken knob on a 485 Tech 485 and I made this mold from, um, from a good knob this is made with a two-part um, silicone rubber molding compound and I've put uh, I'll put some links below as to where you can obtain these uh, parts this uh, material but it turns out that the knob from the uh, PG506 is almost the same configuration as the 485 knob but there's an insert in the PG506 knob, so I'm going to just remove it. And once that insert's removed, the knob will fit into the mold correctly. In order to mold the new knob, I insert the aluminum insert from the broken knob into the mold. And the mold has some small, maybe not be easy to see, um, some small sort of nibs that came from the holes in the uh, original knob that led to the set screws. So I want to make sure when I put in this aluminum insert that I line up the set screw holes in the aluminum insert with the little nibs on the model, on the, on the, mold and I want and I'm going to make sure that the aluminum insert is centered. Now ideally my original plan was to put the skirt on the old the broken skirt on and mold the new knob and just have it end up with the new material attached to the skirt but that didn't work out very well so I ended up just molding a knob like with the mold like this and machining down the extra material until the skirt fit on and then gluing the skirt on with super glue. By the way, the museum does have a collection of knobs, non-skirted type knobs. Um, if you're looking for replacements, you can contact the museum and a few skirted knobs for specialized instruments but largely uh, we have we have very very few of these skirted knobs this is what we need to get started the um, casting material is a two-part polyurethane this came from tap plastics uh, which is a west coast chain um, but you but it you also can get it in this the kit from Smooth On, along with the uh, mold making material. And this is mold release. Um, you need to treat the mold with this so that the part will come out, and not stick to the mold. And in order, the the, the material will cure to an opaque white. Um, so um, I have this colorant. Um, black colorant which you put in the right amount I'll try to get the right gray it's kind of difficult to get the right uh, colors but I'm uh, this uh, the uh, polyurethane and the, and the uh, silicone and mold release comes in the kit from smooth on the colorant has to be bought separately and you have rubber gloves it's not that the materials are that dangerous or poisonous to handle but you don't want to get them on your hands because they're sticky and, and uh, hard to get off. Measuring cups, 
so that, that uh, we can measure out the, the casting material. This material, uh, you use equal volumes. There's some other materials where you use equal weights or, or particular weights to get the right mix. And something I'm going to mix it in, I'm going to mix it in this Dixie cup because, because I can uh, crease it and, and make a pouring spout to, to uh, more direct material into the mold. First step is to prepare the mold by spraying it with um, mold release. I think this is some kind of silicone oil, I'm not sure. I use a brush, make sure that it gets all the way in. And then it needs to dry a few minutes. And the next step is to mix them, let's see, well actually the next step would be to put, prepare the mold with the aluminum insert and make sure that the, and make sure that the uh, set screws line up with the nibs on the mold. That the part is centered. Now I'm going to mix the material. I'm going to start with the B. And I'm going to use 30... Oh, it's hard to pour. 30 milliliters. I'm going to put the colorant into the B material. And I have no idea how much to use because uh, the material does lighten. The white, when it hardens to a opaque white that would mix with this black to make hopefully a shade of gray that I want. So that's the B material. Here's a tip. Put the colorant in after you pour in the B material so that you don't get your graduate dirty to the point where you can't read the graduate gradations anymore. Now mix in the A material. And again, it looks pretty dark, but it will lighten up as it hardens. In fact, you know that it's hardening because streaks of light color start to appear in the... I want to make sure you mix it thoroughly. They say it will start to gel in five minutes, so... You want to pour it before it starts to gel. Whoops. See, it's, it's difficult to uh, mold or get the right amount of material with the skirt in place, which is why I've been in my original attempt to mold it with the skirt, and I will machine it off later. Now for the big moment. It's been at least half an hour, maybe more, since material was poured in. If I'm at all lucky, it will just come out. And there's our final, there's our molded knob. With the aluminum inside. A little darker than I wanted, a little rougher. 
um, molds. Actually, my first had to make one attempt to uh, with the older material. It's a little rough. This is my second attempt. The material I had on hand was too old and it didn't cure right and uh, nearly damaged the mold. But now I can machine off the extra skirt material, extra material, and uh, machine it down to where the old skirt will be can be glued back on and the, the uh, I have to make some holes for the to reach the uh, set screws, which are somewhat covered up by material. By material, but there's the knob. Okay, the next step is to remove the excess material with a Dremel tool. This is the finished knob. Um, could be a little better quality if the mold were in better shape. The uh, molding compound, the, the soft uh, silicone molding compound, degrades basically every time you use the mold. The skirt is designed to fit into a recess in, in the uh, gray plastic part in the original knob, but there was some still some material, gray material from the old knob attached. I didn't want to jeopardize damaging the skirt, so I just ground the uh, skirt down flat and ground the knob down flat fl so they were flush and then glued it together with super glue. And I had to go hunting for the uh, set screws. I did a fairly good job of aligning up the, the nibs in the mold with the set screw holes. So if you need to make a knob in the worst way, this is probably it, but since it's made of unobtainium, maybe well worth it. Thanks for watching.